Hi, everyone. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a bit uh, just starting up the strategy session now with the webinar. Welcome, everybody. And I was just waiting for people to join us. It's right on. Um, oh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Diella. Thank you. Uh, just seeing everybody is getting ready to join this exciting strategy. I'm not too sure how many people we've got joining at the moment. 15, welcome, 15. Be great if you could just, uh, hello, Wolfgang, Wolf, is it Wolfgang? Hi, good morning. Um, if you could just write a little comment there, just so that I know that you're actually there. And uh, kia ora, kia ora, Jacob, great to see you. Um, it's very exciting. Oh, kia ora, Chris. It's wonderful. So I'm just generally going to chat until we've got, oh, wow, they're all coming in now. Fabulous. Ian, Anna, fabulous. Hi. Hi, Gary. This is great. So the morning has started off uh, very, the prep that goes into this um, webinar is unbelievable from a technical perspective, and I'm glad I'm not doing it. I just focus on delivering the webinar. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Jesse. Nice to see you all. So we'll leave it another two or three minutes um, to start things off. It's really, and what I'd like to do during this webinar is any questions that you have is pop them in the chat because I can see them. Um, and then that can create um, lots of engagement. Oh, kia ora, Megan, welcome. Uh, it's nice to see you here. Kia ora, Sophie. Oh, you missed the last one, but glad you watched the recorded one. So you're kind of up to speed with where we're at in the second webinar, which is fabulous. Yeah, as I was saying, the technical requirements uh, to set this up are pretty exciting, and I'm glad I'm not the one doing it. I've got Anya, who's sitting with me very close in case anything goes wrong. And I've got Diala, who I'll introduce in a minute, and she's going to be managing all the polls and the interactive things and the chats and all of that kind of thing. So actually, why don't I um, introduce Diala? Diala, do you want to pop up and just say hi to everyone? So this is Diala. Hi, everyone. So isn't it great technology? We're all in different spaces. Um, Diala's at her office at home. I'm here. Anya's next to me. So Diella is going to be managing the chats and the polls that we're going to be doing. And um, hopefully we're looking for lots of interaction because the more I know about you and what you're thinking, the more I can give the information that's targeted to your needs, which is all of what is today is all about. And it's also so, really important to keep an eye on the chat because um, I remember in the last session, there were some authors and some books and things like that. So, you know, behind the scenes, if anything or any resources uh, that we think will be useful, we'll pop them on the chat as well. Fabulous. Great. Can we record? I mean, can we keep the stuff on the chat? Is that, do you know, Anya? Do we keep it? It'll be on the it recording. Is. Yeah. So it's all recorded. Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Diella. You can go now. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> All right. Um, have we got any more? How are we going? 22. 22. Okay. I think we'll just wait one more minute um, and get started. So the clarity session uh, was really about, um, and I just want to cover that off, was really about getting a sense of self and understanding frameworks and strategies around under, uh, getting to know you better understanding what your thoughts were, what your obstacles were in regard to self-limiting beliefs, the imposter syndrome, we covered that. We covered um, determining how and what commitment looks like on this journey, uh, which is really important uh, to understand what your commitment is and how you progress or how you navigate through the obstacles and challenges. So what we have done and what we're planning to do in the strategy session is take all of that knowledge and then turn it into kind of how do I put it into an action plan? And so there's going to be lots of tools um, and frameworks that we're going to take you through in this session, which is pretty exciting. So for those of you who don't know me, 
I am um, going to start off with a question, I think, and then I'll introduce myself. But this question is a really important question to me, and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, it was a question I've asked myself many times when I look at my journey of personal growth. And there was, what does personal growth mean to me? And how can I start the process? And this is a question when I'm working with my coaching clients that they ask a lot. They come to me because it's a point of, they know they need to make the changes, but they're not sure how to do it. And we all have this question. And I think it's a really, once you figure out, I think is the first part of the strategy, what is it about personal growth that is important to you? What is it that you want to achieve and how committed are you? And the thing is, how important is investing in me? And that's the question I ask myself. What is investing in me all about? What do I want to achieve from that investment? So investing in me is all about my own growth. It is about me learning. It's about me achieving and understanding how I want to achieve the things I desire. So my growth is an important part of investing in me. My learning, the challenge of learning and being open to learning and being agile in my learning helps me to grow. The more I learn about self and others, the more I'm able to navigate my way through this, as you would all have experienced a complex and very um, disruptive world. The next one is my well-being. And that is just not my physical, but it's my mental, my, my mental well-being, my spiritual well-being, and of course, my physical well-being. So there are three elements to my well-being. And so when I look at my personal growth, I'm looking at how do I, it's not only just in my professional capacity, but it's also in my personal capacity as well, because my well-being is really important to my whole journey of growth. And the next one is investing in me is all about my future. Where do I want to be? How do I want to present to the world? How do I want to stand in the world and say, yes, this is me. This is the value I deliver. These are the things that I can make a difference with. And how do I engage and connect with people? What is my future going to look like? Comfort is a, thing, a scary thing for me because when I feel comfortable, I, it, 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 it sort of sets me into, I need to prepare for the what's next. So my future is part of my relevance. It's part of me understanding and knowing my value in whatever context my future is. So that's investing in me. So essentially, when you invest, you have to understand what your return on investment is. What are the things that you're going to look for? And what are the things that you are going to measure? So when you go on these courses and when you get coaching, you have to be very clear about what your return on your investment is. You're, you are the most important asset. And so therefore, if you're going to you know, spend or invest money in your growth that is even going to the gym. If you're going to sign up to the gym, have a conversation with yourself and figure out what is my ROI? What is it that I want to achieve? And what do I need to navigate through in order for me to realistically achieve those goals? And so um, the questions that we're going to face today, so that's kind of my sense of where I am. And I wanted to share that with you because you, then you can get a better sense of how I think and how I'm going to be sort of presenting to you today. It's really about me sharing with you the knowledge that I've attained over the years and the journeys I've been on and putting them into frameworks. And it's very much an insight into the coaching process that I use. So the three questions or the three frameworks, if you want to, concepts, if you want to call it that, um, is the why. So the question is your personal brand. 
And I'm going to explain to you exactly what a personal brand is all about, etc. But I'm going to take you through the first concept of why do you need one? The second concept I'm going to take you through is the what. So what makes up a personal brand? And the third concept I'm going to take you through is how do you get one? And that's full of tools and strategies. And that's where I really want you to sort of contribute at the third part of the, um, of the webinar is asking questions. And if I can share with you the answers or tools and strategies, um, it will happen in the chat. And that's the interactive part of the webinar. So that's the webinar. So who am I? Well, I'm Catherine. I'm a director of M2M, a coaching and recruitment company. And professionally, I have uh, three, two fabulous, we three fabulous team, Anya and Diella. And we're on a mission to move the world to more, move people to more, both in coaching and recruitment. We're on, the, on a mission, and we'll talk about taglines and that later. But professionally, M to M is all about moving people to more through these three strategies, clarity, strategy, and results. And so um, that's our foundation pillars professionally as M to M. And they exist personally. Um, that's me. Um, I actually have two grandchildren and a daughter-in-law. Um, we, we couldn't get photos to fit in. So um, they're in Sweden at the moment, but coming home next month, which is really exciting. So let's get started. Anyway, before we start, how's everybody? Pace is okay. If you could just give me an idea, am I moving too fast? Is it all right? Yes, Diella, you've raised your hand. If it's all good, yep. If you could just raise your hand to say close, yep, all good, fabulous. So if things are um, going too fast or they're, um, you miss something, just pop it in the chat and I can see it and then I can adjust my speed because I get excited and sometimes I can get, I'm trying to keep on focus, on focus because I've got lots to get through in a relatively short time. Two hours sounds really, really long, but boom, with so much information. So I'd really appreciate if you could just engage and say, well, slow down or can you speed it up? Or I don't think I'll have problems speeding it up. So let's get started. So let's start with a poll question. And the question I uh, would like to ask you is, has your personal brand contributed to your success? So as you can see up there, we uh, if you could just answer yes, no, or not sure. Um, and if you are asking yes, it would be great in the chat if you could share what of your what aspects of your personal brand have co uh, contributed to your success. Has it been your tenacity? Has it been your perseverance? Has it been your commitment to uh, work, your work ethic? Has it been your specialist area? Um, not sure is, so we've got, oh, so a higher portion, which is fabulous because that's what today is going to be all about. So those who are scoring at 44 or so percent, oh, that's interesting. Um, you share what it was, if you would like to share what it is that you think your personal brand has, uh, how it has contributed to your success. Be interesting to hear. Um, for those who aren't sure, um, it's going to be, yeah, this webinar is going to hopefully put that into a yes for you so that you are able to understand. Ian has raised his hand. Um, oh, sorry, I've just missed Ian's one. Getting things done by working with others enthusiastically and bringing them on the journey. That's fabulous, Megan. Thank you. Being seen as a fresh pair of eyes, a trusted friend. Love it, Jacob. Thank you. Attitude, dedication, and strong relationships. Fabulous. That's great. It can do attitude and enthusiasm. Yep, that's good. So it's great to see particularly for those who aren't sure, that these are the kind of attributes that people are aware of. Consistent, holistic, and a holistic focus on my subject and expert areas of expertise. That's great. Thanks, Chris. 
So we're getting to see a sense of the words or the understanding of self that makes up a personal brand. And it's good to see that a large portion of you are having a sense of awareness. And hopefully the webinar for those of you who have said yes, will tighten up the, pre the frameworks we will provide in this webinar, will tighten up that a little bit more. And for those who are wanting to start on the journey of a personal brand, we'll have a strategy in order to start that. A willingness to help and a can-do attitude. Great. That's fabulous. Thank you very much. Oh, here we've got last, a safe pair of hands, ability to distill complexity and provide independent thought. Hey, thanks, Anna. That's fabulous. That is really good. So everyone, thanks for contributing for that. That's fabulous. So what we're going to look at now is, um, we're just going to press that down, it is a personal brand I think by John Stanich. And I quite like him because he's written a whole lot of books around a personal brand. And one of the things that he said is bring the best of your authentic self to every opportunity. And for me, that's really important about the clarity session is the journey to understanding self. And I think when you have a good sense of yourself and who you are, then you're able to look and leverage opportunity and you're able to understand how you best contribute and what your value is to every opportunity that's presented to you. So, um, so the question we're going to look at now is why do you need a personal brand? Well, I mean, there's a lot of, um, I'll just come back a little bit more because I think before we go, and this is me just having a little think, a lot of people have a, a perception that a personal brand is a bit salesy and a bit egoy and all that kind of thing. And it, I just think the context of a personal brand has been taken out of proportion. A personal brand is, in particularly in today's world, is essential. And that's what I'm focusing on is why a personal brand is so important is because it's not only the professional part of you, but it's the personal part of you. And that's what I want to sort of, the message, I think, if you can walk away with anything, is a personal brand is not you in a professional context. It is you. It is you professionally and personally. And the best that you can do is present the best you. And the authentic self is you. So whatever context you're in, in a professional, personal context, you operate on the same recipe, on the same values. You can't distinguish or you can't separate the two. This is me in a professional capacity and this is me in a personal. There are probably tasks that you do differently, but the essence of you is the same. So if you're an attentive listener at work, you're also an attentive listener at home. If you have a can-do attitude at work, you also have a can-do can do attitude at home or with your personal relationships. You can't, if you're consistent and have a holistic approach and a holistic focus, you will have it in your personal life, with your friends and your relationships, as well as your professional. So the first thing that I think to start to think about is you can't separate the two. They're actually, this is you. And I think if we get that as a sort of a perspective of yourself, then understanding the why becomes a lot easier. So the first part of why is because the way in which the world is at the moment, it's really important, it's complex, it's disruptive, and um, COVID, and, and it's just, and we'll talk about that in a little minute. But the concept that I've chosen here is the hedgehog concept. And the hedgehog concept, concept is by a guy called Jim Collins, which uh, he wrote a book called Good to Great. And he's focusing, he works a lot with businesses and organizations, but he used this as a personal vision as well. And the essence, I think, of the hedgehog concept is that, and I'll just use this quote that I picked up this morning, is the hedgehog concept is not a goal to be your best, it's not a strategy to be your best, 
nor is it an intention to be your best or a plan to be your best. It is an understanding of what you can be best at. And that is the essence, I think, of your personal brand. And that is where you look at your vision incorporates what are you deeply and passionate, passionate about, what can you be the best in the world at, and what drives your economic engine. And what are the aspects of your economic engine or your professional engine that includes the yellow, which is you. So you use all of those three elements, and that is what defines the understanding of what you can be best at. So it's a really important to, as I said before, the professional and personal comes together with your vision. So why now? Why are we talking about personal brand? And you may be seeing it, you know, on LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, you may be seeing it. If you're reading um, the Harvard Business Review, there's lots of articles going on in the um, business reviews. So why now? Well, a personal brand gives you clarity. I know who I am. A personal brand gives you focus. I know what I need. And a personal brand gives you direction. I know where I'm heading. And with those three factors, clarity, focus, and direction, you are able to navigate what we are now facing and it is a competitive, disruptive world. Uncertainty is our new normal, I suppose. There's divisiveness. There's a whole lot of elements going on in the world, which without these three foundations in your life, is going to be very hard to navigate your way around. Clarity, I know who I am. I know what I need. And I know where I'm heading. And when you have that, I think that gives you a, such a solid foundation to look at the world, to look at the obstacles, to navigate the challenges, and to make informed um, decisions on how to leverage opportunity. So you no longer stand in a place of crossroads. A lot of pe coaching people, you know, my clients come to me and like I call it the crossroads of disquiet. And my job as a coach is to move you through the crossroads of disquiet and the crossroads of disquiet as I've you know and I've been there is that you stand in a place and you have many paths and you know you need to change but you're not sure you know you need to make do something different you know you need to make different choices but you're not sure how and if you stay there too long in a crossroads of disquiet um, your motivation, your belief, self-belief, and the limiting self-belief start to dominate your world. Some of us are really good at quelling it, but I believe that what you resist will persist. So the crossroads of disquiet, to move through that, these three platforms, clarity, focus, and direction, are probably the pillars to which you can base a strategy to moving through the or deciding at the crossroads which pathway to take. And if you don't like that pathway, you can change it because you have the ability and agility to change because you know that if that direction that you've chosen is not correct, you can pivot or change it to another, another direction or another pathway. So one of the factors that where a personal brand um, is so important for you is that there has been an erosion of trust. I mean, we are facing such a dist distrustful state with our relationships with business and with government. Um, and if you see at the bottom, there's a source by uh, the source, there's Edelman, who he, um, that the company did a trust barometer for 2022. And what they found is that there's a distrust spiral with government and media, and this is worldwide. 
And we all sit there and nod and think, yes, because we're experiencing it here in New Zealand. There are, the media are getting pummeled and the government is getting pummeled because of this element of distrust. And I think it's the context of sharing information, too much information, and there's many reasons why, but that's in a spiral. There's an excessive reliance on business to come up with the solutions, um, and that is elevate, or creating a distrust in business, particularly corporates. There's a mass class divide. The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and it, that is creating distrust. And there's the failure of leadership in government, media, and business. Now, this is spiraling. So with all this distrust, which is kind of a out there concept, how does it relate to you? Well, the trust relates to you in the sense that it is now, um, I'll just move it back there. What's happening is people are talk, turning towards individual relationships and they're determining their trust in the relationships that they're having as a team or with your manager or with your CEO. And they're saying is the more communication that a CEO or general and leaders, senior leaders, the more open and communicative they are with their employees, the more the trust barometer goes up. So as an employer, there is an importance around building trust. And the personal brand is part of that trust credibility. The communication and connection of trust with your staff is key. And with an employee, your ability to build trust with your team and your um, the managers and those above you, and the senior leadership team, are key to your ability to perform, to be engaged. So the trust factor in the levels to which we are as individuals is actually crucial to us to understand about how we as individuals are building trust and connecting to trust and connecting to people, sorry. So um, the erosion of trust is one significant, and I believe, uh, factor to why your personal brand is all about, is really important to start thinking about how am I creating and connecting and building trust. And so we have a trust equation, which is really important, and it's a really good framework when you start to look at who am I? What am I all about? And what's my value? So the trust framework, or the trust equation, I should say, equals your credibility. And that, are, that is your words. And I remember in the old days, no, not in the old days, you know, uh, I remember my dad used to do business on a handshake and he would often say, my word is my, you know, I, is my trust. I will deliver on my word. The, my word is who I am. And so there was a very strong, and business was often done on a handshake. Um, and there was a very strong um, faith or trust in those relationships. A lot of my, I remember my dad used to do, can anyone remember those days? The handshake was the way we did business. Very simple. What you said, what you delivered. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Yeah, it, it was a very important, like very vivid memories of that. And um, I don't know if it's how important it is today. Yeah. Um, I think it might've been kind of become more complex. Your word, is your, your word is your bond to follow through. That's it. Thank you, Ian. So that credibility is around your words. And that is essential around what words you cho um, choose to use that resonate, that are you and that you're not using a language that isn't you. So the question someone will ask if they're looking at you around your credibility is, is this person qualified? Are they true to their word? And they will listen and they will watch and your body language will you know, be a part of that concept as well. But essentially that's the question that's going on in the person you're talking to. Is this person qualified? The next one is reliability. 
and that's the follow through. And those are your actions. So if you say you're going to do something, you follow through. And that is really the second, that is such an important component. You know, the, um, what was it? You walk the talk. I don't know how many of you have um, see, heard that one, but it's very much my word and my actions are all aligned. And the question that the person will tend to ask in their mind is, do they do what they say? And the third one is safety. Do I feel that this person is safe? And I will need to move this because um, this chat, can I just cut it? Yeah, that's a safety emotion. So the safety emotion is, um, do I feel safe opening up to them? So am, do I feel safe sharing my knowledge or sharing information with them? And the last one is what is the motive? What is the focus of this person? Uh, are they focused on their interests or mine? Now, this is a really important question. And I know that many times I've sat there and listened to people talking. And I'm thinking in a business situation, and particularly in the recruitment space, um, not that they're focused on mine, but when they are when prepping them for interviews, it's around how are you going to ask questions as a candidate to understand what the client needs? And as a client, how do you understand what the candidate needs by asking questions so that you get a sense of the value that they can bring to you? So often the interviews tend to be the employer interviews, the client, or the interviewee candidate responds. But the way in which the trust factor is working in the world today, it's very much on an equal basis. Because if you can't respond and have trust, then that relationship becomes skewed. And now it's more important to have a more balanced relationship. So that's a, um, a really good framework. And it's really good, I think, my suggestion uh, for you all is to look at that framework and kind of put some actions, you know, around what is my credibility? When have there been times when I have delivered? And what have people thought about? And the other thing I've just thought of is that you can start seeking feedback, getting feedback from other people about who you are and what you're all about and where they see your potential you could use this framework as a way to ask questions. How credible am I? Have there been situations that you've witnessed about me where you have seen strong credibility that I've delivered in my words, I've delivered in my actions? So um, how are we going? Is everyone okay on board? I've sped up a little bit. So I'd like to get some comments around the trust equation is there any questions that anybody's got to ask everybody sort of yay nay yeah come on guys interact yes yep jason all good thank you i just have it's good to know because it's really hard i can't see you so i'm not sure um how my pace is going but that's a really good um framework the trust so let's have a chat. Pace is great, thank Whoa, going good, thanks. Thanks, Phoenix. So let's have a chat before we do that. Let's, this is where I want to get your thoughts around um, what questions you have. So as I said earlier, the more I know what you're thinking around personal brand, the easier I can adjust and um, adjust my presentation to meet your needs. So I put some little questions up here that people commonly ask me is I'm an introvert. How do I build my personal brand? I'm not good at networking. Does that mean my personal brand sucks? Debunking the myths. Thank you, Diala. That's important. Um, the other one is a, is a personal brand just a social media profile? Um, what's the next one? Um, can you show me some tools on how to build my personal brand? 
in the I'm I'm successful in my career. How would a personal brand help me now? So what I have done is I've given you sort of the top five questions that I get asked about a personal brand. And that's the kind of um, path I'm following is looking at those questions. Is there anything else um, that anybody has apart from debunking the myths, which I can do that? Yep, we can do that. Eh? That's fine. Is there anything else that comes to mind or are these questions pretty much on task for everyone? Um, Assuming, oh, hang on, it's asking feedback on who you are. I would think it's for me to reflect on who I am as feedback is not necessarily reflects reality, but assumptions, perception. Um, it can do, but the, it's really important to understand, this is the complexity of a personal brand in some ways, that a personal brand is, gives you the clarity, the focus, and the direction but it also gives you, and if you remember the trust factor, it is around the motive and understanding others and how others see you. Uh, Jeff Bezos said, um, there's a comment about the personal brand is what your reputation, what they say about you when you leave the room. And if you don't know what they're saying about you, then your as your control over how you present to the world is lost. So the personal brand gives you the ability to control what you want people to say about you. The other side is you have to understand is how you make people feel. And the only way you're going to find out how you make people feel is by asking them. And that's where feedback is really important because we don't really we don't know what the world sees. And I, I think it's, you know, I'm my superpowers, I see potential. I can see potential in people before they see it. And so when I tell them, they say, I'm not confident, um, I'm an introvert, I don't really know how to present myself. And I'll say, well, actually you do. Because what I see is not an introvert. I see a confident person. And they're looking back and saying, no, that's not true. And I'm going, yes, it is true. So sometime our self-limiting beliefs cloud our perception. And that's why it's good to go and get feedback. And there's a framework that you can use, which we can actually, I'll get Anya to some key questions that you can ask people um, about feedback and how to go about getting feedback from others. But essentially it's how you how the world sees you so when you walk into a room this is how the world sees you and they will recognize the goodness and the qualities and the value you bring before you actually do um i can define relate to the introvert and not good at yep that's great definite reason with the first two questions any tips on how to build a personal brand during covid times while we are all behind the computer screen Yes, we are going to be doing that um, and covering off that, Phoenix. So thanks for that great question. So let's start looking at um, the what. What makes a personal brand? And let's have a reality check before we start on the what. And let's look at our mindset. Before we start on a journey of change, and this is in the clarity section uh, webinar that we did, was it before Christmas? It was, I think, yeah, gosh, time flies. Um, we did the clarity session, and one of them is what, is, what does commitment look like to you? And what is your mindset? And I think that if you look at the question, Phoenix, you know, yes, you are behind the computer screen, but your mindset of where you are in your own self is really important to building and understanding how to create your own brand because it's all about you so it doesn't matter what the situation is it's about how you are within yourself and remember those three elements of um, personal investment or growth personal growth um, it was my future it was my well-being and all these elements were able to help me navigate through whatever situation I was in 
or am in. So there's a growth mindset and there's the fixed mindset. And this uh, slide we had uh, in the last session, and I've used it again because it's really important. So if you're looking at, in some ways, Phoenix, you know, you could say that the COVID and the being in a, behind a computer screen had, does that impact on me building a personal brand? Well, if you're in a growth mindset, it's something to navigate through, but it won't stop you. So there's the difference between having a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. And it's really important. And we have elements of both. You know, you can't go, oh, my totally growth. There are elements. I think your fixed mindset, if you start working on it, becomes a lot quieter and your growth mindset starts to take over the thoughts. You know, challenges help me grow. I like to try new things. If you're in a fixed mindset, failure is the limit of my abilities or failure is my opportunity to grow. So I think what we're trying to do is that, and this is what I explained in the clarity session, is that our subconscious only believes what we tell it. And so our thoughts are the facts to our subconscious. And so it creates, and it's designed, and there's a lot of theory about um, that aspect of our subconscious, but it's designed to protect us. And so it protects, it protects us based on what it knows. And if we are having a fixed mindset and we're sending thoughts, it believes it to be true. And so what happens is when we start a journey of change, we have to reframe our thoughts so that our minds, our subconscious starts to understand that now, instead of saying failure is the limit, I am a failure and it's because I'm oh, stupid or I did such stupid things or whatever. If we say, actually, I'm going to look at failure as being my opportunity to grow and I'm going to use this as a example or an experience where I can be better, then your mind or your subconscious starts to recognize, oh, these changes, but that's okay because these are the new facts that we are gathering. So challenges, this is not a challenge and stops me. This is a challenge that helps me grow. So the con more conscious we are of our thoughts, the more, uh, uh, what's the word? The more we have control of how we behave. So the triggers, the thought is triggered by an event. So you have a trigger, a thought, and a behavior. So what you want to do is when you're in a situation where you are challenged, then you start to look at what is the thought I'm going to have with that challenge? Do I have a fixed mindset thought or do I have a growth mindset thought? And when you have that thought, and if you choose a growth mindset, your response or your action or your behavior will, rip, will be in alignment with that. So it's a very, if you think about what are the triggers that set me off, what are the thoughts that I have around those, and what is the behavior? Now, if I don't like that, how can I change it into more of a growth mindset? So is that making sense to everyone? Is that everyone sort of, if you just give me a hand up to say, yep, we're kind of cool with that. Yep. Fabulous. Great. So, all right. Yep. Fabulous. Thank you very much. So the personal brand mindset, of course, is a growth mindset. And the question you ask yourself, is, you, yourself, are you ready to commit and be accountable? Now, what does accountable mean to you? Accountable means to me that I am the one responsible for how I respond to any situation. And I tell you, I'm the procrastination queen. I can be distracted, particularly in challenges. I think, um, and Anya and Diella can <laughs> confirm that. I will, yeah, if I'm not, if I don't think, no, I can't do this, or no, it's not, I'm not interested in that. Um, I will distract myself away. I will procrastinate. And in times I used to be called the procrastination queen. Didn't serve me well. 
And so I would start um, these journeys of growth where um, I would, you know, halfway, I'd, you know, I'd try to lose weight, go to the gym, and it would never, I'd never complete it until I understood what Accountable was all about. And I think that for me, when I, when I got that, when I was in a situation where I had to, um, you know, be accountable for my actions instead of blaming people, um, I re- had to realize that I played a part in these situations and therefore I was accountable for my actions. So if I wanted to change the results, I had to change how I responded. And that was my job. And I think another word is um, accountable is responsible. And responsible, I always use it, I break it up into response able. So if I am response able, then I have control on how I behave and what my actions are. So these are questions that, you know, on your journey to a personal brand, you have to work through. And we did this in the clarity section. Um, There were a number of questions that you can ask yourself in regard to your commitment and your accountability. Are you ready to invest in you? Do you understand what investment means? And I shared with you what investment meant for me. Uh, And the clarity around if I, what does investment mean? What do I you know, what is the action I'm going to take to invest? What are some of the strategies that I'm going to invest in? Um, And that's really around your choice. Do you know what your drivers are for personal change? Now, the drivers for personal change can either be negative or positive, positive. So you could be at a crossroads of disquiet, and that's a negative driver that's pushing you. Or it can be a positive, not a positive one, but a desire. So there can be a need or a desire. Do you have a desire to be better? Do you know within you that you have more to offer? Do you feel frustrated that the true value of what you're doing is not being recognized? And you want to, do you aspire and have dreams to be something? And are you, you know, you know, you want to be a a chef, I don't know, but you're kind of holding that back. So there's the aspiration part of a driver and there's the, um, the what's the word, the disquiet part that you know you need to change, but you don't know how. And it's painful. And in both parts is the pain of change and then there's the uncertainty of change. So it's just understanding what your drivers are because there's different motivators for them. And here again, the self-awareness. Are you aware of your obstacles, fears, or limiting self-beliefs that you have to deal with on your journey of change? Now, that is the question of I'm an introvert, um, which we looked at earlier. And, you know, I'm not good at networking. That is an obstacle which you need to work with. And it's about understanding the value you bring to the world. And it may not be networking where networking is, you know, where you go in and hand out your business card. Is, you know, you go into an empty room, even, well, actually, I can do it. Not, yeah, but I know people who are handing out the business card. Even though I'm comfortable doing it, it's my personality type, I can do it. Before I go into the room, I have to get my head clear. It's not something I do easily. It's something that I have to prepare for. So, and networking and handing out your business cards and is not, it's too stifled. It's yuck. That's not the way of the connect. It's all about connection and trust. And I know that because you're an introvert, you still connect with people. It's just that you engage in a different way and this is where having a personal brand and understanding the value of who you are and what you're all about gives you the confidence and the self-belief to create connections with people and of course there'll be those who won't and there are what those who are but you will be attracted to those who will 
because they feel you and they get you. And it's an easier way to connect. Um, and you're more resilient of yourself and your ability to understand those relationships that do not work for you or you cannot offer value to them. How do you separate your accountability and responsibility when you're working with a team when another member does not contribute like they should? That is a difficult one, uh, Ian, and I'm quite happy. Uh, that's, yeah, another aspect of um, another framework I'm thinking of. What I think we should chat in about that because I can give you some help around that um, because, yeah, we, that's taking us into another context. It's about managing relationships um, and expectations in your relationships, both professionally and personally. And I think we did that in the clarity section. I think I, and I could go over that with you, Ian. I hope that's okay. Um, so this is knowing yourself, what makes you unique. So this is part of the brand is understanding what makes you unique and understanding your purpose, your value, your strengths and your skills are part of you understanding what makes you unique. So for those who are there today, how many of you, if you could just write out whether you think which one of the four or all four of these foundation points of a pers personal brand, do you think you have under control or you think, Okay, I think I know my value. I just like get a sense of where you all are sitting in those um, four elements. Are those of you, you know, are there, are you out there? Um, strengths and purpose for me. Okay, Diella, do you want to share? What are your strengths and purpose? What are some, name me one strength, give it. Most of the four, though, probably with some gaps in each, my perception. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that is, that's where, um, Chris, getting feedback is really important to understanding how others see you and how they see um, your, when you enter into a room or when you work with them, your ability to, there's a whole lot of elements of self that we don't really understand until we ask others. Most of the although probably some gaps in each one. Yeah. Organize. I do continuously trying to grow in all these areas. Human people centered. Yep, that's you. That you very human people centered. Continuous. So I like that, Dominique, because you are always growing in this area. This is personal growth. I think you get the core parts of it, but you've made a really good point there, Dominique, because the personal brand, you know, who you are, you still remain the same, but elements do change. You may, for example, your skill set may change because you've moved into another area of expertise, which you've become very good at. Your strengths, you may decide like, I've, you know, for me, I think I've become far, you know, more focused in what I do. And once I Understand. once I got who I was and what I'm really, really good at, I was able to navigate or deal with those areas that I can do, but not so good at. They don't really, I don't get energy from them. So I became very focused on what I do and I didn't get distracted by all the clutter of other things. Whereas before when, before I had clarity about me and my strengths and my purpose, I used to get involved in like detail, which I can oversee detail, but I'm not the detail person and hate it. And that would impact on my ability to, uh, yeah, it would, I just feel like I was in quicksand the whole time. And then also one of the things that I can do is I can walk into a room and pretty, I'm a, a knower and I can get, things pretty quickly and I didn't really understand I get impatient 
And so when I was in a meeting, I'd get impatient with others because I already knew the answer. And now I know how to navigate that. So, um, you know, the skills and the strengths are, are fluid in some ways, depending on the situation you're in. But the core of who you are stays the same. But I do think that um, the purpose and value, they your purpose can change a bit, but I think your value, it just adapts. But it's very, the core does not change. I hope that makes sense. I hope I haven't raved on too much. Uh, yeah, I am good at reading the room. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> So your purpose is what you do to bring your vision into reality. So now, can I just have a caveat here? I've chosen, this is how I see it. So there are lots of, when you go Google, there's lots of different, on Dr. Google, lots of different um, interpretations. And that's what I'm suggesting to you. This may not be, one that resonates with you, this definition. Um, for me, it's an action base. I think purpose is all about action. Some people use it as a mission. Oh, I don't know. Um, some people use your purpose as your why. But for me, I kind of, it gives me a sense of um, action. And that's why I've chosen this definition. So you can go and Google your own definition. But essentially, if we look back here, your purpose is you have to have some sort of, you know, what am I doing to get to my why? What is the, the action of what I do? What is my purpose for doing stuff? And why do I want to do it? And the value is what is the value I bring? What are my strengths that help me bring the value that deliver on my purpose? And what are the skills that enable me to deliver my strength, demonstrate strengths to deliver my value to action my purpose? So this is what you use the actions to bring your vision into reality. So for me, if I think about my purpose is to, um, is to create opportunities and educate people so that they can leverage and live their life to the fullest. So I create the opportunity of growth. And every time my actions are looking at how do I engage this person into bringing them into an opportunity of growth through the frameworks, through the work I do, so that they can move on and move forward to even more in life. The value, the standards, and oh, the webinar is being recorded. That's interesting. Thank you very much for telling us that. Is that Siri? I don't know. <laughs> So the core principles give meaning to your life, a set of standards on which you base your attitude, choices, and actions. And I think that's pretty much um, what all people see value, your value. Yep, we're going to do some more work around that in a minute. Um, the strengths, these are ways of behaving and acting that come easily to you and make you feel good when you're using them. Energy is really important. So when you look at your strengths, um, and sometimes we tend to intellectualize the strengths, um, and the question I ask many of my clients is, when you demonstrate that strength, does that bring you energy? So for me, when I'm, I'm a big ideas person, and I'm a future thinker, so when I'm in a strategy session, and I'm able to think and talk and be in the future around where we move to in the, with our business, I feel, I'm energized. And we have um, Anya, who is, she likes to know how to implement. So when I, um, when we're having conversations or when we're talking about where we want to go and what we want to do and what are the new products and what are we going to be doing, um, I will be in the future. So I'm leading a future discussion. And Diella and Anya is more about, well, what does that look like? Diella will say. And then Anya will go, how does that look? And I say to them, stop asking me what and how questions. Do not, because it, it stops my energy. The moment you get me down into detail, I'm, I'm like, nah. So don't ask me that. So now they're trained. <laughs> 
if I'm in the future and we're looking at strategy and where do we want to be and what new products are we going to create, that's my time. And that's where I get the most energy. And then when I've done that, then I realize, okay, Diala, you come and do the what, how, what's the strategy for that? And then Anya, you come in and do the how. And all the little details, the technical stuff, that is your, I can sort of oversee it because it needs to align, but I'm not in it because that's where my energy is drained. So energy and when you're performing your strengths is really important to getting that aligned because if you're in a space where you are um, feeling like you're in quicksand, it gets demotivating. You do like asking. Yes, the strength finders, Megan, thank you very much, is the a great. So if you, I mean, I think that me, my first, uh, the strength finders is woo. So I'm a W, -O, I was like, oh. So that's connection, um, so I'm an, you know, strategic, innovative communicator. So essentially, I'm in the very much the big why, creative, innovative ideas space. And my pace of thinking, I've learned to slow down sometimes. But as I said, now I know where I'm best and add best value so I can frame it up so that people understand that's the space um, that I best operate. And I think I'm a strategic woo who activates through relationship and connection. You and me together. I'm a strategic woo too. Actually, I use woo strategic, but I'm going to do strategic woo. Thank you, Megan. That's great. And the skills, of course, are the technical abilities, the ongoing practice that you have from a professional capacity um, that you use to keep you going, your ongoing learning. Um, and also from a personal capacity as well. There are things that are ongoing that need to be developed and that you need to keep current. And uh, thank you, Diella. There's the website. Um, is that Fish Pond? The book, The Strength Finders. You can also go um, do the, uh, what was it? Oh, can you put that www.highfive.com? High five test, I think, www.highfivetest.com. There's a free strengths finders test that you can do there. Is it high five? Can you look for that, Anya? Just see. That's the, a free one that you can do. And then if you want more, the um, strength finders is more in depth and it takes you through a whole lot of examples, as you would know, Megan. Um, Gallop, there you go. High five test. Yep. Thanks. So that's the free high five test. And it just gives you an introduction to the strength finders. But if you want more um, in depth and read about more about the strengths and skills that come up in the strength finders, the book is really, really good. And I think if you buy the book, you actually get a test. Well, you buy the test and you get a book, I think. So the poll question is, how, would you find this question difficult to answer? And the biggest question, and everybody is, is tell me about yourself. Now let's have a look. This is the thing, when you ask the question, even at an interview or anybody says, and this is at networking, um, if you're an introvert, it's, you know, so what do you do? So tell me a bit about yourself. And this is the, I think, no, oh, that's great. So most people here are okay with it. Okay. In one sentence, for those who are okay with it, can you just give me uh, one sentence? Um, what would you say? If I asked you in one sentence, tell me about yourself, what would you say? Oh, Megan, you, you would? Okay, so it's, oh, it's close, 40, yes, 60, and no. Would you find this question difficult to answer? Tell me about yourself. 
For those who won't find it difficult to answer, which is no, could you share what you, in one sentence, what you would say if I asked you the question? Tell me about yourself. Yes, are oh, you would? Come on, Diala, you can contribute if you'd like. <laughs> I think we've got everybody there. Thank you. That's great. I've married the two young boys and I've just set up my own consultancy business in Wellington. Fabulous. Yep. So what does your consultancy do, uh, uh, Anna? I'm a director of a cramp and I help candidates and organizations move to war. Thank you very much. So when you make that one statement, and we're going to be doing this in a minute, so get ready, is your tagline, sustainable finance, risk, and insurance. Ah, thank you. So your tagline is one of the, is going to help you answer and refine your one sentence, perhaps for those who have no issue um, answering it. Is there anyone else who'd like to share their one sentence? Nope. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, wow. That is great. I'm a thank you, Pandora. I'm a career advisor who is a vessel for others to find their grace. In it. Love it. Love it. I like it. It's a fabulous one. Oh, I like that one. A vessel. Hmm. Very good. So um, this is where we're moving on to is how to answer the one sentence. And thank you very much for um, sharing that, which is great. And I will close that. How do we close that down? Yep. Oh, thank you very much, Anne. So this is the tagline, which is essentially your one sentence. Your tagline states what you uh, express about yourself and what others experience from being around you. It is the promise you make to yourself and how you show up in the world. And I think the tagline is really important because it helps you to answer that one sentence. Tell me about yourself. And when you're networking, when you have, um, when you go to introduce, and particularly as an introvert, when you're connecting or building relationships or in any sort of situation where you have to present self, this tagline is kind of your comfort. When you know it, it's just, it gives you the confidence to be able to say, hi, I'm, you know, Catherine, I'm a director, as Diana has, I'm a director of a recruitment company and I help candidates and organizations move to more. And that gives you that, you know, I'm a career advisor who is a vessel for others to find their greatness. So that is very much a way in which it is your foundation. So you can just pretty much gives you the confidence to get out there, the belief, and just connect and build relationships with people. And as an introvert, it just navigates your understanding of yourself and where you best play and where you best deliver value um, is where you build the best relationships. And so here are some examples of taglines. There's me. Um, this is my LinkedIn profile. I see potential, personal brand strategist, intuitive coach, and recruiter and coach. I put people's growth, future possibilities, and success at the center of everything I do. Uh, there's another one, helping you build a brand, content that builds your business. Um, she's the content. So what we're doing is giving you examples of LinkedIn and how they've positioned their profile. Um, hers is a little bit longer, the content master, speaker, storyteller. So she's kind of done it in chunks rather than a sentence. Um, creating extraordinary sales success for business and rock star roles for individuals using da 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 da, -da. And that's Stuart's and J ah, this is Jason's. I don't usually stalk profiles, but when I do, I probably have a career opportunity for you. Let's find out. 
<laughs> that's a really good tagline. That this is a LinkedIn tagline, but we sort of like, I like that one. So I've connected with him. So these are the kind of, you know, when you see, it kind of gives you an introduction into um, what other people, what they're like, because that's energy, right? When you read that and you can see his little um, Darth Vader and, I can't, and there's a picture of himself in the middle there with, I don't know what he's doing. I can't see, but um, it, just the sense of those, that one sentence is really, really cool. So, um, and then there's Michelle Obama, who I love. If you don't, uh, can you just move this down? Because it's, I've, how do you move your chat box? It's just right there. I can't, is it? Yeah, sorry. Oh, can we close it? Thank you. Thank you, Anya. If you can't see Anya, but without her, I'd be going. <laughs> So if you don't get out there and define yourself, you'll be quickly and inaccurately defined by others. Now, remember when I said the quote with Jeff Bezos, said the same thing. Um, your personal brand is, about, is all about what people say about you when you leave the room. So if you aren't taking action, responsibility, accountability for yourself and how you want to present to the world others will do it for you and that could be a good thing and people I think one I can remember one person said to me oh well I don't need a per, uh, personal brand because um, I deliver results all the time I was like well yeah I mean I don't know about you but that's fine if you're happy with that but a personal brand is more than delivering results. It's important, but there are other elements. How do you make people feel? How do you define your value? How do you stay, stand in a room and present yourself? How do you uh, navigate through um, obstacles and challenges? How do you um, leverage opportunity when presented? How do you have clarity and direction when you need to go to take the next step? What frameworks and tools do you have in place to push you to more, to push you to be your fullest potential? What dreams and desires are you chasing? Are you wanting to attain? The journey is all about, the journey to the personal brand is the most exciting thing because the more you do it. And if you watch um, Brene Brown's talk, which was in the, the clarity session that I shared with you, it's all about you, the power of vulnerability the power of you standing and saying, this is me, this is what I'm all about, this is what I deliver, and this is what I can do for you. Now, you're either going to, you know, they're either going to like that or they're not, and that's fine. It's about next, who's next out there that gets me? And if you are able to express your true self, and I think that might relate to your question, you know, uh, about responsibility and accountability in which I'll um, get the framework for you. So if you message me, I'll send it to you and I'll get your email address. But that's all about, you know, the navigation of understanding others and the value you deliver to the outcome and how that is communicated is really important. It comes from who you are and how you deliver value. So if you are responsible or you are accountable for a situation, your ability to present that um, to others who don't understand is far more clearer. And, and then you're able to present your position and not be worried about the response in the sense of they don't get it, they don't get it. And so how do you choose then to respond to that? Or if they do get it, the outcome is obviously better. But the thing, you're not so reliant on how others respond to you you're more able to navigate that and have belief that what you've done has been your utmost best and the value you've delivered is your best. That was very deep, very deep. <laughs> so what are your three words? So let's start, because we're starting to think of a tagline, but the first thing is to kind of come up with three words that are specific to you and this is where I'd like you to um, think about I'm going to give you some examples of that but 
but this is where I'd like you to contribute what you think your three words are as a starting point. So here are some examples um, for you to have. Visionary strategic energizer, best-selling author, entrepreneur. What's the other one? I can't read that other one. What is it? Oh, what is it? I can't. Researcher. Researcher. Thanks, Anya. Best-selling author, entrepreneur, and researcher. That's Mel Robbins. Oh, if you, um, I love Mel Robbins, and I think I talked about her in the clarity section, and she's just um, released a book, which I popped in the clarity section. So it is in the webinar the website to her book about taking action and changing your life. It's a high five challenge. Great book. Um, this is my cousin who's governance strategy and mana wahine. It's really powerful. So that's uh, Repackers one. And um, this is Nianong, which is optimistic, tenacious, and a sense of humor. So uh, these are examples. So what I'd like you to do now is just to, if you could, share three words, just the three words that boom, come into your head. Now, remember, you don't have to be right. It's just what three words would come into your head that would describe you. Does anyone start? What are your three words, Diella? <laughs> I put you on the spot. <laughs> Is anyone going to share three words? Visionary, strategic, and energizer. I'm going to change mine, Megan. I think I might put strategic. Oh, no, woo. Maybe I'll leave it. No, I think I'd energize a good woo. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. Um, so is anybody sharing their three words or is it too hard? Is it too? This is where spontaneity is really important. You just boom it down, just like bang. And um, is anybody, no, I can't see anybody. Is anybody, oh, seven new messages. Oh, look down here. Oh, gosh. Uh, people, pragmatic, engaging. Thank you. Oh, I like, oh, I <laughs> get it sorted. Get it sorted. Risk specialist, researcher, and focused, reliable growth and empathy. Curious connector, energizer. How do I go? Oh, okay. Here we go. Curious connector and energizer. Thanks, Jacob. People, pragmatic, engaging. Thanks, Wolfgang. Oh, I like get it started. Okay. So how do I scroll down here? Um, won't let me scroll down. Oh, yep. Here it is. Risk specialist, researcher, focus. Thank you. Reliable growth and empathy. Fabulous. So that's the start of you thinking about your one, your tagline, which could be one or two sentences. So these are the kind of words that um, you could use if you uh, say I'm a reliable. So when you say growth phoenix, what does that mean? Is that growth in a personal perspective or is it, um, you could say reliable growth focus solution, solution, that's more though. So I think if you think of a word like growth, it might need a little bit more expansion, I think. But so when you do your tagline, you think of these three words, reliable growth and empathy, and how do you describe its value? Strategic ex executor insightful. Thank you. Optimistic, determined, and researcher. Yeah, that's great. Um, what is it? Strate optimistic, determined, and researcher. Okie dokie. I just want to go back up here. How do I go back up? I just saw one up here. Um, let's go back up. Uh, just what was it? Uh, curious connector and energizer like that. C 
career specialist, a community advocator and cultural innovator. That's fabulous. Leader governance, get it sorted. I like that. Focused, organized people. Okay, thanks for your email, Dressian. Yep. Okay, so those are really good starters. Um, and the other thing is when you practice saying these three words, think about how the other person, and that's where feedback is if you go and share it with other people, what does that growth mean to you? If knowing me, as you would say, Phoenix, if you went to somebody and said, well, these are my three words, what does growth mean to you in regard to me? Give me some examples. It may help you start putting your tagline. It will help you to start putting your tagline together. So um, oh, this is the next one. So crafting your story. So your personal brand is made up of a story. It's your story. And how you create a story is really around you understanding what are your personal goals. And the personal, I mean personal and professional. So it's what do you want to achieve, which is your why. So what are some of the, the goals that you set for yourself in regard to um, your vision, really? And it's your your unique value proposition. So it is around you how, what is unique about you? And I, you know, and you can use different words, but I think that I tend to, you know, I'm out of the box. I'm an out of the box thinker. Anya says that word's used a lot, but it kind of, I think out of the box. When somebody talks to me about a solution, I'll go out. And um, that's what I'm really good at. I'm, I'm not good at staying in here. I'm good at going out there. So if you as an organization want someone to go into the future, like way out, and you want to look at what that could look like, I'm your person. That's what I do. Um, if you are a client, a coaching client, and you want to create a personal brand, I will take your potential and turn it into a future value-based individual with a story. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not your traditional, I'll ask questions, I'll challenge you. I'll say, well, why can't you do that? I can see you do it. Why can't you see yourself? What do you need to get there? I can be a bit, I've got called a smiling assassin. I was like, whoa, no. I was like, no, I'm not. So I, my job is because I go out there is to take you with me and I show you ways to do that because I'm a very big believer of dreaming. And as adults, we don't dream because we are afraid that we won't achieve our dreams. And I don't, and if you don't have a dream and if you don't know what gives you energy and what inspires you and the things you do every day that makes you, that helps you to get to where you want to go. Um, then there's a lot of regret. So it's about being uh, vulnerable enough to dream and to stand in your power and say, this is what, that's my goal. It's not about getting to the mountain. It's very interesting. I was coaching um, someone the other day who had a very, um, had a lot of challenges that she had to, in her professional career, I was helping her with. And they were big mountains, big goals that she had to work through and negotiate. And she achieved it. And then she said, I've reached the mountain. And I went, yeah, you have. And she goes, oh, my God, now I have to move to my next mountain. <laughs> she said, I thought that was my, like, that, that was my dream. I said, yeah, but the dream is to chase the mountain. That's what you want to go. You, you just want to keep going. And she said, oh, my God, now I've got to start it again. And I said, yep, you want to start again. And so, but you take what you've learned when you reach that mountain and that's the foundation to taking you to the next challenge. So that's just sort of understanding your unique value proposition and your goals are part of your story. And you start using examples. And I said to Margaret, your journey to that mountain is your story because you set your goal. And the value, your unique value proposition is starting to form because your achievement is part of your story. You can talk about the things you did to achieve that. And that is your unique value proposition. That is what, you've, that is what you delivered, your tenacity, your persistence, 
your courage, the work that you did, and your investment in you by coming to me to help you get there, to give you the tools. That is your story of your journey. And that is how you start to craft your story. It's your personal experiences that are part of it. So then you start to prepare your professional story. But you can, it's not around, oh, this is me professionally. It's this is me personally. And I think it was Anna that shared that she was a mum of two boys and set up her own, her own uh, consultancy. So she starts to expand on that. And her being a mum of two young boys is part of her story. It's her unique value proposition. The rest of it is how she enhances all of that as a professional and in her new business. And all the elements of herself that she's put into growing that consultancy, starting it, research, the courageous aspect of setting up your own consultancy while managing two young boys, while being in COVID, is the unique value proposition. And you just fine tune it and it becomes your story. So for you know those of us who are reluctant to, uh, as no, well, I'm, not, I'm an extrovert, but introverts, it's once you get your story, it's not about being scared about entering into relationships with people because you've got a story to tell and you know what makes the value you bring. This is you. There is no other you in the world. I think Oscar Wilde, um, be the best you can be because everybody else is taken or be the unique you or something like that. Everybody else is taken. Nobody has you. And that is what your unique value proposition is all about. Yep, continuous improvement. Absolutely. Determine which platforms will support your personal brand. Now we're getting into a bit of more of a, um, into the digital social media aspect. But I think that this is really important. So the platforms could be at work, you know, your professional life. Um, it could be professional um, affiliations such as RIMS, where your personal brand will, is important and it's important to support, you, you know, that organization can. Then you've got your digital footprint, which we're going to go into um, now. And... Um, yeah, we'll talk about those things in section three. But determine which platforms will support your personal brand and identify what you want to be known for. Sharing your knowledge, for example, or expertise, taking people from the, you know, um, taking people into the future, into their potential, releasing potential, um, delivering outcomes that challenge and create innovative growth. Um, whatever it is, Identify what it is that you want to be known for. So when you leave the room, you know exactly what they'll say about you when you've gone because you've told the story and you've delivered your unique value proposition. And that is where people will remember you. And that is where you build the trust foundation or the trust equation. Actions. Oh, sorry, words, actions and emotions. And the motive is that you delivered value to them. You made them feel that you were listening and that you delivered value to them, even if it's just a conversation, and they will remember that. That is trust and connection. So the how. So before we go into the how, is everyone sort of okay? Is there anything you'd like to ask about the what? This will also be sent to you, and we also, so have um, a little, what would you, what do you call it, workbook with tools and a whole lot of stuff, which I'll take you through now. But is there anything anybody else wants to ask? Anything at the moment? Are we going okay? Pacing it up. We're coming into the home straight. Um, thank you all for staying. It's much appreciated. It means I might be on track. Is everybody okay? Just hands up just let me know that the pace of this if, if there's anything I've missed um okay yep cool everybody's Diella's raised hands okay thank you Ian thank you Anne it's always good to know that I'm on track um 
and if it's hard when you can't see faces so I'm really you know responding to you um giving me the comments and stuff going good thanks all right great all right so um now we're going to go into the how and um how do you get a personal brand well this is your online footprint some people call it a digital footprint and this is where social media and I think that was one of the questions way back is um which we asked in the chat and that's what people ask is my personal brand on social social media um and it is that is the way the world is I think some people are a you know, I don't want to do LinkedIn, I don't want to be social media, but at the end of the day, you are on social media, whether you know it or not. And um, one of the elements is that you may not be actively involved in social media, but you are, and Google has information about you. And the first thing is understanding what is um, said about you on Google. And we have a checklist, I suppose, that we're going to send you, which you can follow through to go and kind of find out what is about, you know, what's said about you. And it may be okay. I had a situation where I had a candidate, a very good candidate, who um, got a job, quite a senior job. And um, the client came back to me and said, you know, we love her. She's referenced really, really well but um have you googled her and I said no because I was she was so great and I said no I haven't she said well I did and apparently she had an issue with an employer and went to a dispute employment court and no it was actually no sorry she had an issue it was taken to employment court and it was published five years ago in the Bay of Plenty Times this case and it mentioned her name and she when I went back to the candidate I said to her did you know this and she went well yes but it was settled out of court and there I didn't even know that uh, that the newspaper had reported on it in fact it was they weren't meant to because it was all done confidentially because the employer had stuffed up so I reached an agreement that we would but she didn't even know so we managed to never, and that was fine. But the fact is that was one case I came about, um, came across recently with my own candidate. And I must admit, I sometimes I do, I go on Facebook, well, recruiters do. That's the thing we do, we Google everyone. So um, yes, now I think, Diala, can something like that be removed from Google search? No, not really. But what you do is if you're aware of it, you can address it. So then nothing becomes a surprise. So it's a bit like revealing it right from the start because you know it's there. And that's the key. So when you know you're able to deal with it, it's when you don't know. And that's what happened to my candidate. The other one that your online footprint and your personal brand gives you control. So it gives you, once again, how you want to be perceived and what you want people to say about you and that's really important and on your online footprint you control it so for me on my LinkedIn profile I control it I control what information goes on there about me I control uh, what content um, what content I respond to um, who I engage with um, it's all down to me and the next one, it gives you the focus part of your LinkedIn is your personal brand on LinkedIn is your focus element. So it gives you the ability to present yourself in a way professionally under the profile that you want for you that best heightens and highlights your value. And then it gives you the ability to prepare, which is your profile, your CV, um, and therefore you have better understanding of your personal brand in a digital space is about knowing, controlling, focusing, and preparing a profile. And that's all aligned. So there's not one thing that you don't know. 
There's not one element you can't control. There's total focus about how you're presented and you and your profile, you control how you prepare your profile and what is said about you. So um, let's just get into some statistics. Um, and this is what we're going to hand you hand it out to you, Googling myself. So just giving you a heads up on these are all handouts that you're going to get, checklists. And I just thought I'd put a little, um, it's US, but nearly 50% of US adults say that the results they Googled on themselves weren't positive. Might be the same for you, but it just gives you an indication. So Googling myself is a checklist for you, which you will receive. Um, and then what we're going to do is we'll send that through to you tomorrow because some of the questions, we might put some additional information into the um, handouts based on what's been said and shared here in the chats. So that's why it's not going to be ready straight away because we just wanted to have that flexibility to make sure that we were addressing what you needed. So um, that's Googling yourself. It's a checklist. Um, and hang on, what is it? Social media audit. So this is around you going through um, your social media profile. And here's another statistics. I, I think it's actually higher because I've, myself, I do social media re reviews and audits on all candidates, but 70% of US recruiters and HR pro professionals have rejected candidates based on the information they found online. So here we have a declutter your social media life, which is um, another checklist that you can use. These are all tools for you to use where you can just work through the steps just to make sure that everything is um, how you want to be seen on social media. That means you may want to delete some photos or I don't know, maybe things are not so great. You're, you, you don't even also the aspect of your Facebook picture um, that has to sort of be aligned. It mightn't be too great. So it's giving you the ability to just go through that audit yourself and check. So uh, LinkedIn. 95 we find 95 percent of our successful candidates on LinkedIn. So um, I think that um, I think that it's really important to understand how important from a professional perspective LinkedIn is. Um, and this recruitment tips to boost your LinkedIn profile gives you a um, probably an overview or a checklist, is that what, another checklist, isn't it really, of what you need to do. It tells you how to set up your headline, uh, your head, your photos, the background um, headline, what words to put in, where they should be structured, what kinds of things you should say in the about section, uh, what kind of engagement. I think it's about, you need about, I think once you've got 200 connections you start to get momentum and 500 you kind of get into the next level so the focus is to get to 200 and then build 500 and that's with a personal brand and focus you're starting to connect with people that are building your LinkedIn profile and connections so it's quite a um, it's a process but I think if you follow the checklist you'll be fine and um then again it comes down to once again you know what's your commitment what's the investment for some it's not for others i get lots of people who say oh you know i'm too old for linkedin i've already got my career sorted so i don't need it i just think well actually you do you do need um to be on a profile because that as i said way back at the webinar way back at the beginning your personal brand is about you being relevant no matter where you are, what you're doing, and what age you are. And I think that being relevant is you look at the platforms to which you can stay relevant. And you choose how you engage, what you want to do, and what platforms you do. But in a professional capacity, being relevant professionally, LinkedIn is um, probably a great platform to start with and engage in. 
Now we also have, if you're wanting to do a CV uh, online course, we have one here that we're going to give. It's a free one. Um, and if you're thinking about going for a job or you're thinking about, you know, I had, oh, I did a CV for a guy who was six. He was, he trained, uh, did his qualification certification to be a real estate agent. And he did never had a CV. He had worked for himself. He had no profile. He had nothing. He, all his work, he was, um, worked in the construction industry. His jobs he'd got through, which was great, um, through, yeah, being tapped on the shoulder and somebody saying, can you come and do this? And this was, he decided at this age, he wanted to be a real estate agent. Um, he had big background in sales. And he came to me and he said, I don't have a CV and they want to see my CV. The agency that wants to take me on board wants a CV. I'm like, you don't have a CV? He didn't. And so he did the free online course and then we helped tidy it up a little bit. But that's a really good course that we offer. And um, we're going to give, yeah, you know, that's part of what you'll get in the handouts. So once again, before I let go on to the next thing, your CV um, is your pretty much part of your brand, all aligns up. If you go back to the prepare section on uh, social, you know, in the CV, what are your personal brand? Um, you control, you know what's on Google. You control what you say. What's the third one? LinkedIn is your focus. And this is your prep. This is what you control. How do you prepare a CV that presents and is aligned to you and your brand? We also, if you're struggling, we have uh, free templates. Basically, your resume has six seconds to impress a recruiter. I'd probably say two. But anyway, we'd give <laughs> it's I'm just like, I look at them. No, no. The photo, man, I can't, uh, people say don't put a photo on a CV and all oh, this kind of stuff. I think that it's important because it's part of the trust equation. Visually, and it's a great photo. Invest, and this is what you come back to way back, what am I prepared to invest in with my personal brand? A great photo, a fabulous photo. A fabulous photo where you go, oh my God, I look great. That is what you invest in because the photo is once again, is key to the trust equation because it's giving people the energy of how you present and the color and the way in which you are presented in the sense of your photo is a, any, it's a connector. So visually, um, really important to have a good photo and on your LinkedIn profile as well. So a personal brand is about you not focusing on perfection, but focusing on how you want to touch other people's lives. And that to me is really important because we have a tendency as grown-ups to focus on being perfect. But it's not about being perfect, it's about being you and, and knowing how do you want to be seen and how do you want to touch other people's lives in presenting you to them what kind of relationships how do you you know when people when you leave the room what do you want people to say about you what do you want people to feel when they meet you and that is all within you and if you focus on being perfect then your personal brand will never be you you'll always be struggling perfection is exhausting. And if you watch and go back and watch um, Brene Brown's on the power of vulnerability, where you can stand there and go, oh my God, that's a growth mindset. I've just made the biggest faux pas. And I need to look at that and figure out what part did I play in creating that? What do I need to do better to improve that situation to make sure it doesn't happen? I had a situation where I was um, twice I had um, organized to have coffee with a, a girlfriend I hadn't seen for a long time. Twice I forgot. And I was walking with Diella on our well-being walk the other day in the morning and I walked past her house and I, I wasn't that true, Diella. I got the phone and I sent a message. <laughs> I talked to her. I just couldn't believe it. And so um, for me, it was actually owning up. 
So I sent her a message and said, I'm going to call you. And I called her and I said, I, I just got to own up. I forgot. That doesn't mean I don't value you. It doesn't matter. It was just forgot. I have no excuse. And she laughed and she said, that's fine. Let's set another, you know, let's do another one. And I said, I'll buy lunch. She goes, no, I can't do lunch. Let's do coffee. I'll buy coffee. But it's, you know, it's owning up and standing in your, in your vulnerability and acknowledging it. And that's what you focus on, is how do you want to touch other people's lives? So to give you a little bit of a go, a little bit of an understanding before I start playing this, we've just launched our um, online course, um, your, your Brand Your Story. It's been a huge program for us to develop, and we've launched it, and um, it's fabulous. We're very excited about it. Uh, we're just humming. However, taking people through the course where I'm doing the videos and everything like that, at the end of the day, I said, you know, I, it, we have to show that I'm vulnerable. And unbeknownst to me, in all the videoing, um, our video editor had managed to put together this. And it has been shown on LinkedIn. And yes, you can do it. I know you can do it. Okay, ready? Go. Yeah. To creating your personal brand. <laughs> so let's get started on personal brand. Oh, geez, what the? Nothing is sexier than a girl who knows how to take control. Now, when I discovered that I'm actually an indecisive person, I didn't really discover it. People told me. I figured out. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. My high shoes <laughs> lost my balance. Because when you look at the past and what you've learned, you come to the future. No, you don't. You go to the present. <laughs> Discovering your why. Now, why is why? So, why is why so important? The key to this activity. <laughs> you gonna buy? <laughs> Love me, Jenga. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Video. I mean. <laughs> You know you are. You are the superstar. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and that's what I find so exciting. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a, um, how do I get back into the next one? Yeah. That's me. That's kind of uh, the whole <laughs> I always kind of, you don't know, really, how many people have come up to me and said, oh my God. Now that took, I, for me, it was just, yeah, I had to let it go, but I could see why it was important to share it because I could see that people need to understand that who I am is not about me being perfect and knowing everything. This is what happens behind the scenes. And um, yeah, I just thought you, you would appreciate, <laughs> I don't know, get a bit of a laugh. <laughs> And um, understand, don't try and be perfect. Just try and figure out who you are, what you're great at, and what value you bring to the world and how you want people to feel about you when you connect with them. So we've got some little question times. We've got five or a few minutes for before we close. Um, if anybody's got any questions that I can answer for you, um, or if there's some resources that you want us to, anything uh, that you we can add to our uh, handout. Is, I, is it a handout that we're going to send? Yeah, we're going to send a handout. Um, then happy to answer any quick questions. Anybody got any questions? How Can I see whether the questions are coming up, Anya? I don't know if I can. What does it give me the whole few bits? No? Yep. 
I know that we're close to time. We've got another few minutes. So there's anybody. Am I that great? Did I just give everybody a great session? <laughs> Can you give me a hands up? Like, yeah, we've done this. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's good. If I drafted up a revised. Yep, happy to review, Anna. If you send it through. Yep, we will. If you send it through to me, happy to do that. Um, and we can also, you know, if you want a photographer, we've got a few that we've used. Oh, okay, there we go. There's my email address there. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, Jesse. Um, thank you. This is just the last little. It won't go. Question and answer time. Oh, thank you. Great session. Thank you, Pandora. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you. And um, anything else there? Oh, before we go, next um, results, Wednesday, the 16th of March, 2022, same. I hope to see you there. Uh, be ready to uh, receive our handouts tomorrow. Uh, you've got my email. If you need anything, let me know. And um, there's a little bam, wham, pow, pow. Hope you've energized. Yay, yay, yay. Thank you for being there. Thank you, Megan. Really appreciate your feedback. Um, it's been wonderful. So thanks all. And um, we'll... Oh, oh, Peter. <laughs> okay. Oh, so you said, okay, okay, Peter. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for letting me know. Welcome. I wonder how you got that. Oh, anyway, that's technology. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm going to leave and um, it's all been wonderful. Go well and have a fabulous, fabulous day. I look forward to seeing you on the results uh, section. Session. March 16th. Bye. Bye.